a second. We're rolling. Okay, today is October 8th, 2008. We're sitting in the home of Patricia Johnson. How are you doing, Patricia? I'm doing fine. How are you? Uh, it's very nice of you to let us come here and share your home with us and everything else. It's been a, a lot of fun. Um, I'll ask you some very easy questions and we'll work into some harder questions and easy ones. And don't worry, you can't get anything any wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> you're going to do great. Um, we'll start off. What's your uh, date of birth? April 2nd, 1945. Okay. And where were you born? In San Francisco, San Francisco, California. Really? Mm hmm. Um, now, at one point, your family and yourself came to Illinois. That's right. My mom and my dad both actually were from Illinois, but my father was in World War II. He was in the Navy, and he was stationed at the Alameda Naval Air Station, which is on the east side of San Francisco Bay. Mm. And I was born while my father was still in the Navy because the war wasn't over until August. I was born in April. And in about October, when they were all decommissioned and sent away, they moved back to Chicago, and I was brought up in the Chicago area. Mm. I lived in Chicago for about five years, and then I lived in Evanston. Okay. I went through the whole Evanston school system. How old were you when you were living in Evanston? So. We moved there... <coughs> When I was in first grade, so I must oh, have been wow. si six. Okay. I was probably six. Okay. So where did you live in Evanston? Were you living on a farm? Or? There are no farms in Evanston. It's a suburb okay. of Chicago. It's the first suburb on the lake north of Chicago. It's where okay. Northwestern University is. Okay. Um, in Chicago, we lived in apartments. In mm -hmm. Evanston, we lived in a house the first couple of years. And then in southeast Evanston. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we moved into an apartment. We lived in apartments until I was, I think, a junior in high school. And then we lived in houses for a couple of years. And then I left. Mm -hmm. And my parents moved back into an apartment. Evanston still is full of great big three bedroom, two bath apartments. Mm -hmm. There, a lot of them are the same. They have, they're like U-shaped with a little courtyard, and there would be three, maybe five banks of apartments. And we always lived in the front, so we always had a view out the window of what was going on on the street. Cool. Right near the lake. I kind of grew up at Lake Michigan oh, at really? the beach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you're there with your mom and your dad. What about your grandparents? My father's parents uh, lived in Chicago on Lakeshore Drive in a great big apartment building that they had lived in for years and years in probably a 12-room apartment, a great big, huge apartment. Um, my grandfather worked for Container Corporation of America, which was a, a corrugated container company. Um, my dad and his brother, George, both went to work for that company also. And it eventually became um, uh, Owens, Illinois, Forest Products Division. My dad stayed with them. My, my uncle left and went to work for Weyerhaeuser. And by that time, my grandfather had died. My grandfather died when I was five. Uh, yeah. Hmm. It was sad. What do, you, what do you remember about him? He was incredibly generous, and he loved all of us kids. There were five grandchildren, mm -hmm. my dad and his brother. Um, my brother, my Uncle George had three sons, and dad had a daughter and a son. So I was the only girl. And my grandfather loved us. He played with us all the time. And my grandmother lived to be 94 years old, so I got to know her very, very well. And she was always the same. It, it was always, well, give me a big hug before you leave because I, I could die before I see you again. I mean, and then I'd see her the next day, you know. <laughs> she grew up in La Salle, Peru on a farm kind of thing on the edge of town. Her father had a hardware store. And my grandfather came down from Wisconsin and went to work there. Mm. 
-hmm. As, that's the best I can figure out. I, I, I'm not really positive about uh -huh. that. And uh, she was one of seven or eight children, and he wooed her, took her off to Chicago. My grandfather was just wonderful. My mother loved my grandfather. They were very good friends. Mm -hmm. He was really happy, I think. And uh, just loved his life. He was 65 years old when he died. He had a heart attack. Oh, gee. It was too bad. Mm. I wish he had lived to be 90. It would have been interesting to talk to him. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, now, you mentioned you had brothers and sisters. I have a brother. Or a brother. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what was your childhood like? Um, let's see. It was like school and going to the beach. That's what it was. <laughs> it was. It was going to the beach because the beach was there. It was free. It was entertainment. And it, and it was, my mother stayed at home. She didn't go to work. She did go to work finally, but she didn't go to work till I was probably maybe eight or nine. Billy was, Billy's younger than I am. And when he was in school and I was in school both, then my mom got a job. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I, we just, you know, we lived across the street from the Lincoln School. It's still there. Get up in the morning, go over to school, play in the playground, go to school. Um, come home, mom would be there. She would always be there. My dad would come home at about seven o'clock. Maybe he worked pretty far down on the other side of Chicago, and it took him a while to get home. Mm. Homework, perfectly average childhood. And in the summertime, get up in the morning, go to the beach, and stay there until you had to go home. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So what did you do at the beach? Swim, get really, really cold, come out because I had to, warm up, go back in the water, swim some more. <laughs> I just spent my whole childhood swimming, huh. I think, floating around, lying in the sun, getting tan, playing in the sand. I know that sounds ridiculous. I actually had, I had <laughs> actually forgotten about that, or I had stopped thinking about that until recently. I took a memoir writing workshop, mm -hmm. and this, the prompts at the beginning were, you know, write down the names of places where you can place yourself and then let one of those things just pop up and go into that place. And the, I just started having all these memories of my childhood at the beach mm. and games that we would play and how, how my lips would literally turn blue because Lake Michigan is not warm. Yeah. It's really cold. I mean, if it gets to be, if it's 62, it's warm. Well, have you ever been in 62 degree water? As an adult, I'll tell you, it's really shocking. <laughs> it's really, really cold. And if it was 55, we were allowed to go in. And now, I I've been in water 55 since then, and it just takes your breath away. I don't know how we ever did it. I really don't, but we all did it. We all went in and swam and turned blue, and you'd come out and you'd be do totally shaking. You'd be freezing <laughs> cold. It's very funny. What kind of child were you? I was very musical. I was probably really bossy. Um, I was unhappy a lot of the time. I, I didn't realize until much, much later that it was because I could tell that my parents didn't get along with each other, but I didn't have any idea how to think about that or and do, you know, and there was nothing I could actually do about it. Um, I liked being busy, and I, I was very religious. We were brought up Catholic, mm. and I think I was very religious. I remember, that just reminded me, I had all, all these holy cards, whatever they are, little pictures of saints and things. I remember having a little altar in my bedroom when I was a little girl at one point. I think I was kind of acquisitive because I, had, I did have collections then, and I was very um, protective of them. And I think that's one thing, one reason why I don't want them anymore, because I don't think that that necessarily brings out 
the best in me. Mm. Um, I was kind of fat, and, uh, and I was a very good student. And um, I don't know. I had some friends. You know, I always had a whole bunch of friends. I'm still friends with people who were friends of mine when I was five years old. Oh, wow. In fact, I was just emailing one of my old five-year-old friends <laughs> today. Yeah, it was a really typical 1950s uh, middle-class upbringing. Hmm. A kind of, um, it's kind of interesting that that is lost. I mean, you, there's nothing like that. No one ever locked their doors. And we're talking about a city. Mm -hmm. Evanston is a city. It probably has the same number of people in it now as it did then, which is between 70 and 80,000 people in Evanston. But I just, I'd get up and leave the house at six in the morning if I wanted to. When I was six, mm -hmm. my parents gave me a bicycle and that gave me a lot of freedom. Because I'd just go out and get on my bike and go riding away. And my mother never worried about me. <laughs> because why would she? And we knew, every, you know, everybody knew everybody. Because there were televisions, but people weren't glued to them. There was a lot of outside activity in the summer times. At night, you'd go outside, and all the parents would be out there, and their kids would be riding bikes, and everybody would be hanging around. Mm. There was no air conditioning. Of course, we lived right near the lake, so it almost never really gets hot. I mean, it gets, might get hot in the day, but it almost always cools off mm -hmm. at night. And I can remember being thrilled on a couple of nights when it was so hot that you actually couldn't even put a sheet on top of you because it was so warm. And that was so exotic mm -hmm. because it was always very cool at night. Now it's like, oh my God, another one of those horrible nights when you can't even have a sheet on top of you. You know, because here we are away from the lake. We, we get a lot of hot nights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now you mentioned, you know, church, which is an organization. What other organizations were there um, outside of school that you could have been involved in? I think I was in Girl Scouts. My friend Debbie's mom was the Girl Scout leader. Mm -hmm. I'm still friends with Debbie. Um, and I don't remember how long we did that. I think just in grade school. I don't remember doing that in junior high school. Um, and we were all involved with the YMCA in Evanston. Uh, we all went there for swimming classes in the winter. We swam there in the winter. People had parties there. And when we were in high school, there were social service clubs through the YMCA. That, that raised money for various charitable organizations and, and did stuff. And um, I was always in one of those. Hmm. Um, I don't, well, when I got to be in high school, I still had catechism classes and stuff like that. But I was a singer, and I sang in the St. Mary's Church Choir, which was a very prominent... Catholic Church choir in the Chicago area. We had an absolutely fabulous organist. And we rehearsed on Tuesday nights, and then we sang at high mass on Sundays. And I did that for four years when I was in high school. That was really fun. And at school, I did all the play, not plays, but I did all the musical theater stuff at school, and sang in the choir and stuff like that, in the chorus. I don't know. We hung out at the library. That was interesting. We all hung out at, out at the library when we were in high school. I mean, uh, every, other kids were hanging out at, you know, Coke and French fry restaurants and things like that. But my friends and I hung out at the Evanston Public Library. You could take the bus there. So, you know, you didn't have to have a car. Um, it sounded great to your parents. Well, I got to do some research. I'm going to the library. You know, the library was just packed with all these high school kids <laughs> who were supposedly doing research, but they were really, you know, just feeling their way through high school, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But but there but um, 
there was no rampant anti-intellectualism like you so often see nowadays. I mean, everybody really cared about their grades. Everybody really cared about where they were going to go to college. We were all kind of little intellectual snobs, I guess. And growing up in Evanston, it doesn't surprise me that that would happen because Northwestern University is there and it's held up as a mo it was held up as a model for us. And, and at the time that I was at ETHS, it was one of the best public high schools in the country. Hmm. I don't think it is anymore, but it was when I was there. Hmm. Um, you've mentioned it a couple times in this church. I mean, of course, I'm sure you went on Sundays, you went on Thursdays for catechism. Where, you know, sometimes church isn't just about going to church and those sorts of things. Sometimes there's social events at church. Did your family get involved in that? Not at all. Because my mother was the Catholic, my father was not. My father mm. made a vow that he would raise his children as Catholics. My mother very soon lost interest in the Catholic Church. Um, after I was born, I guess. Um, she didn't care whether we went there or not, I don't think, but my father made us go. We didn't have any social interactions with the church at all. And actually, I think the main reason I went was because I liked singing in the choir. Because when I went to college, um, oh my gosh, I went to college at Occidental College. It's in Los Angeles, on the, in the eastern part of LA. And right in Eagle Rock, there's a Catholic church. So the first Sunday I was there, I got together with some other Catholic kids, and we went over there to go to church. And it was so horrible. The priest was screaming at the congregants that if they didn't get their kids out there to process next Sunday for the 9 o'clock Mass, they were all going to go to hell. And I said, you know, I, I don't want, I'm not going to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, so I stopped going to church completely. Hmm. And I haven't gone to, uh, to church since. I mean, I've gone to church occasionally. Michael and I got married in the Mount Carroll Catholic Church because Michael's father was Catholic, Catholic and it was pretty important to him hmm. that we do that. But um, I think I might have been more interested in remaining... Uh, associated with a church congregation, if I'd had that I, when I was growing up, if my parents had been involved. But they really weren't. I mean, there were some other friends of mine who were Catholics, and we all went to catechism class together. But that was the, that was the extent of it. It wasn't the way the, the churches are around here. They are social organizations. That's who your friends are, mm. as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. And that's something that Michael and I haven't entered into at all. It's, it's just very interesting the way it all works out. Um, now, you've mentioned a bunch of times about school and um, your school in Evanston. Can you kind of tell me a little bit about it? What was it like, if you were to describe it? It is a, there were 5,000 kids in the school. Mm -hmm. um, it's a huge place. It's a great big, huge place mm -hmm. with a central part of the building that was probably the original building that's kind of like an H. And there's a library in the front and all the offices and stuff. And then there were these four, what were they called? Halls, maybe. North Hall? North? Something. I was in North Hall, which was in the northeast corner. And South Hall was the southeast. And then East was, no. Anyway, I don't know how it worked out, but there was kind of a thing. And there were freshmen. There were, I wonder if they were. I think the freshmen and sophomores used the same homerooms at different times. And the, soft, and the juniors and seniors used one a floor above or something like that. And the homerooms were these gargantuan rooms with, I think, there were... They were called ranges, a range of like maybe 10 or maybe 20 seats, two together, and then an aisle, and then two together, and then an aisle. And you were seated alphabetically, and you're seated by range and your number seat in the row. So like I might have been 19, eight, the 19th 
range in the eighth seat back or something like that. And the person who sat right next to you was called your range partner. God, I haven't thought of this in so long. <laughs> I graduated from high school 45 years ago, and I just am remembering this. Um, and that's where you went for homeroom, which was in the middle of the day. And, and it was like a period, a 45 minute period, divided half into lunch and half into homeroom. Mm -hmm. And lunch was in these, this enormous cafeteria. I, I can't even tell you how big it was, but they used to put out plays in there and they had dances in there and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff like that. And then you would have your classes and you could go all over the building. Mm -hmm. Classes probably had about 30 kids in them. Classes were on several levels. There were general level classes, there were honors level classes, and there were AP level classes. And the school had a newspaper that was published every week. Mm -hmm. And it had plays, it had musical comedies, it had, and, and there were you could only do one after school thing at a time. Like if you were on the basketball team, you were not going to be in the musical because everything rehearsed after school. Mm. So you had to pick. It wasn't like Chadwick Milligan where the same kids do everything. And so if you got, if you're casting a show and you got some kid on the basketball team, you know, he's never going to be there until probably the last week mm. because he can't get out of basketball practice. Mm. Whereas at Evanston, if you wanted to be in the play, you couldn't play basketball. Of course, there weren't really competitive athletics for women then, for girls. Mm. Just intermediate.